Hi everybody, welcome to Big Ollie World. This little loggy went to market. Hang on. <laughs> She's so small. This, this little loggy went to market as well. Yeah? Yeah. So, we're off to Truro. We're off to Truro for the farmer's market because... Because it said so in the Sainsbury's magazine. It says so in the Sainsbury's magazine. They did a selection of different farmer's markets in the country and they've um, picked Truro, Truro as one of the best ones. Yep. Yeah. It's been there since 1999. The cherry green and white awnings that the stores have been a beacon for local foodies as well as visitors. It's on well, Lemon Key. Well read. It's on Lemon Key. So we're going to take a look. I think it's on a Wednesday and a Saturday, Saturday is it? Yeah, 9 till 4 with a smaller market in Falmouth on Tuesdays. So this is going to be a, um, ir well, irregular probably um, yeah. series. Uh, we're going to pop down to various different farmers markets. And um, there's one in St Ives, there's a good one there. Yeah. There used to be one at Senan, I'm not sure. There's we various love ones around. Market, don't we? we love a farmers market, eh? Going to try a few things, taste a few things, probably end up with a bit of a hoard. Not supposed to be spending much money right now, but we, we'll end up with a bit of a hoard. Um, we'll show you what it's like. See you there. Now, Kelly and I are in Starbucks. We're just having a quick drink before we um, get out there in the uh, farmer's market. Yep. Kelly would like to say that I got it wrong and it isn't a hoard, it's a hole. Now, yes, she's probably right, um, but I'm a Viking. You know, Viking hordes, yeah. No, I'm not sure which one's right, but one of them will do. Hoard, hole, you say tomato, I say tomato. A shopping hall. I could look on, on a thesaurus and find out, but it's probably all very close. What you found, love? I was thinking maybe we could get Willow a bandana. <laughs> I think she'd look really cool in a bandana. Well, the trouble is that she's rather on the large side, so I'm not sure it'd go around her fat neck. I don't know. I used to have a cat in a bandana all the time. Yeah, Baby but he wasn't overweight, was he? Yeah. Unlike our cat. Unlike our cat. Who is very overweight. We'll do a photograph for our cat in a minute. Why? <laughs> Dog treats. Dog stuff. Hi, everybody. We are back home. We are, and I'm knackered. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's been a really hot day again. Have you noticed how hot the weather's been again? Uh, should have put some sun some stuff cream. on today. Yeah. Um, hmm. What can I say about the uh, farmers, farmers market? market? It wasn't that many stalls. It it wasn't what we expected, but there's a reason for that, and we will explain that in a little while. But we did actually pick up a few things. We did. Um. It was doing quite well. It was very early. We were told that the farmer's market, even though it's on from nine till... I think it's nine till four. Four. Uh, the foodie kind of places run out very quickly. Um, although there wasn't many foodie ones. No, I will say this. Like, so um, we will be going back, okay? But we'll explain what happened and why. So um, what did we get? We did we get did a few get things. Before. Yes, we did. So I guess the first thing foodie-wise we got was from the Cornish Sea Salt Company. Yeah, we love the Cornish Sea Salt Company and you can get Cornish, the Cornish Sea Salt Company in get it uh, supermarkets and stuff nowadays, yeah. but you don't get the big pots. No. That's a nice sizable pot. And they also do a massive one. They like did a, a bucket, bigger one. Yeah. Which we'll probably end up getting. Yeah. Um, so that because was, that very was nice. good value. That's £6 pound for that one. Yeah, that's very good. When you consider the small ones, they're normally quite expensive, really. And then we got a dinky one. get some other one. Yeah, they had lots of different flavours now. We were discussing uh, with the lady about when we saw Cornish Seas, like when we first moved to St Ives, yeah. there was probably about two different flavours, and now there's just loads. 
So we got the chicken chip salt. Chicken chip salt. I mean, come on, that's got to be amazing, so, isn't it? It sounds lush. Sounds lush. Um, we're going to try that one very soon. We might do a taste test of chicken chip salt. Absolutely. Yeah. So that was what we got from the yeah. sea so that, that was a, a sensible uh, one. We then saw a chili. Yeah. The, the other the other foodie thing. Is from the Cornish Chili Company. They, he was lovely. He was a what really a nice lovely man. He was full of like knowledge knowledge absolutely just knew so much stuff about chilies which we don't know anything really well about we're chili. learning and that's again like you we have to learn all these things but the interesting thing about the chili man was he said that his products aren't necessarily about heat they're, they're flavor, about aren't they? flavor so he had a couple of products that were not overly hot no this is one of them I believe. and that was one of them uh, this is called uh, cherry bomb which uses the cherry bomb chili yeah yeah and it's um, quite mild yeah, well, it's uh, mild enough for me. Well, exactly. You like that one. I tried one called Apache, yeah. which is the, a hotter Hot. one, and which actually was still very nice. It, it, and I said to him, you don't get the heat for, say, 10 seconds. You get the flavour first, and that's the important thing. It's a really lovely flavour, and then you get a little bit of, like, wow, yeah. which is which is good, really. Um, so he, they run the Cornish Chilies, well, Chili Farm, I yeah. guess. Um, 50 different types of chilies they've got. Or they are setting up at the moment um, lots of different things. They've just moved locations. So it's going to be polytunnels. It's going to be an educational kind of thing. You go and do a tour. Um, in the fullness of time, we will go and see the uh, Cornish Chilies farm. I think that would be very interesting to go and yeah. do, yeah? Yeah. So that was a really good one. We're going to try this one out first, but I, I must admit I do like the the Apache one. I also fancy growing one of the chilies that they had they there. They had but... a nice um, chutney as well, which was mild it was a bit like um but it's sort almost of like a cross between a mango chutney and a, and a lime, lime pickle. pickle it's that kind of thing which would, which would be very nice with indian stuff so um, we're definitely going to, start, we're going to try this one properly we need a little taste when we were yeah. there um, and we'll give you a little taste uh, kind of review of this taste experience mm -hmm. um, but we definitely in the fullness of time we will, i'll be contacting him and uh, once they're ready we will be going to show you about the chili farm yep very good then i think our biggest purchase was this and it's not a food item but it is something that we love, and it's from... We went to uh, the store that sells candles. Candles. Well, then, I mean, what did you buy? Candles. We got a lovely um, diffuser, which is made not of alcohol, so apparently they last a lot, lot longer than the ones you can buy in supermarkets or whatever. For essential oils, yeah? Yeah, and a couple of candles. <clears throat> One in particular that you will never smell anywhere but here because it's our own brand and it's that one okay so do love a candle do thank you very much thank you see you soon Bye. thank you so this is the company obviously you've just seen on the video uh mc they're called mo gandles and uh, they're based in red roof in cornwall again we like local cornish things this one is called um if i remember rightly this is the sea salt one no i got oh, sea salt you okay i got surf, surf. Uh, smell honestly smell really good smell can't you smell shame you can see that this is really good quality the wick is a really good size like yeah. a good thickness and um it's a good quality soy wax so it should burn nice yeah and she uses all essential oils and all the things Absolutely. i've kind of just said that on the little video while she we makes did there. soaps and stuff as makes well so a very lovely lady yeah absolutely now, definitely we'll be going back to her because of her we know why the Truro Food, uh, food Fest um, event. Food, the Truro Food, food, uh, food Fair. Farmers no, Market. Farmers Market. That one. The Truro Farmers Market. I knew I'd get there eventually. Um, we know why it wasn't as big as usual. It's about half a size. Apparently, yeah. yeah. And that's because tomorrow is the start of... The Royal Cornwall, Cornwall Show. Show. Well done. The Royal Cornwall Show up at Weybridge. Uh, we're not going this year because, quite frankly, we can't afford the tickets. It's just one of those things. Um, but we'll hope to go next year and show you what the Royal Cornwall show is like. But it's a, it's a, it's the major farming event, a bit like the Royal Bath and West show and all those yeah. kind of ones that we're used to when we lived in Somerset. Yeah. So the traffic's going to be horrendous around Weybridge. Oh, blimey, I'm going to play golf tomorrow. But that's my route. I, don't, I, don't, I might not be going yet. Um, it's going to be chaos. There'll be a bit of rain because there always is on these kind of shows. Um, maybe. You never know. Not due. No, not, not due. Friday. 30 miles, 30 degrees i reckon in yeah. some places yeah um but it, it's a fabulous event fabulous um regular event from the farmers farming world community. really a farming calendar 
yeah. So unfortunately, about half the, the she stores were there. There was about twenty to twenty-five stores there today, and there's usually at least forty-five. Yeah. So uh, this is not quite the video we we're expecting, but we will be going back in a couple of weeks to show Truro Farmers Market in its glory, glory. in its full yeah. glory. Okay. So use this as a kind of prequel. It's still an expensive prequel for me, but hey, you know, I've got to save a bit more. Yes, and all that. A you baby killer jar. Kill the jar. So some of the stuff we've got here is now um, really Truro. not from the actual farmer's market, but from bits of Truro as well. So there's a, there's a fantastic um, hardware shop, yeah. toy shop, and you name it shop. It does everything, doesn't it? Is it called Malins or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, Kelly needed a new little baby, baby killer jar. Look. Because John has seen a, we've got a recipe book. And West we needed cooking. some some different spices. We managed to get. We needed black cardamom. Black cardamom, and we got it. We got it at the local health foodie type place. We did, but it's in a bag. But it's in a bag, so we need. So a we need a tiny that. little dinky kilner jar. I know. And then I found this shop. Oh uh, yeah, this is and, very exciting. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we 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 tend to go to Truro like most people who go to a, a city. They would go, oh, we'll go down the I Street and we do this, and we all kind of do the same things every time. And I said, you know, there must be a few other bits of places. Um, I've had a little walk around Truro before by myself. Let's go down some of the unusual streets. I wish I never went now, but what we did Kelly find, find? A shop called Tugboat. Tugboat, yeah. And it is a tea and coffee shop. It is, yeah. It's um, as in it sells special. leaf teas and coffees. And we all know sorts. you're a tea fanatic. I um I love my tea. I know she does. And so they've got flavored different, all different flavors and types and whatever. So I bought a Turkish apple. Yep. Which is you can have these hot or cold. So Turkish apple, a pina colada, which is orange mellowed out by passion fruit. So that's very nice. nice. Yep. And a peach melba, which I can honestly say smell absolutely divine because they had it there if you could sniff it. Um, I got John some chocolate, dark chocolate coloured coffee beans. I know, that's a migraine way to happen. This is the man who gets cluster migraines and I'm going to gonna have dark well, chocolate coffee beans. You're going to be um, can restricted. We, can we start at 10? No, we're and then starting see at two. If I get a migraine at 10, then we can go down to 9 and then 8. No, you know? no, we're starting at 2. What's the point of 2? And then the what, lady what? very kindly gave me a freebie, which is vanilla, but it's a black tea, so I can use that with milk. Okay, because you've got a little um, funny pot. You've got called a, a stump pot or a stump pot. Stumpy pot, pot in it. Yeah, like so that. you've got you a proper little pot ago, with a fill of it in the pot. You bought me that I did, ago. because we saw them in... Remember where we saw them? Um, in the St. Ives. Street. No, was, well, we saw them in Bristol, but then we also went, when we lived in St. Ives, we saw them at the um, big art gallery. Oh, the Tate, yeah. The Tate, Tate Modern, Modern, St. Ives. That's right. They were, they were using them in the actual cafe, and you said you wanted one, and I sorted yeah. one out. So now you've got a load of fresh, lovely teas. Yeah. And that'd be very nice. And um, if I get serious migraines in the next few weeks, you'll understand why. Because I'm eating the uh, dark chocolate covered beans. And the last thing we did was we found... We found a little... Yeah, we saw a poster uh, actually at the farmer's market about a shop that we didn't know about was again. Was it in between? Something like that, wasn't that? It's something like that. Yeah, we don't have the right name. I do apologise. Inhabit. Um, Inhabit. There we it go. Was close. We had about six different names before we got there. Uh, that's a little bottle. No, it's a vase. I'm never going to get specimen in that. No, it's a vase. Okay. It, it's, it's a, a vase. vase. Uh, it's a little dinky vase, as you can see. I mean, I've got big hands, but I have a little dinky vase. Um, it's for single flowers because I've got some flowers. beautiful things in the garden. We've got oh. some uh, carnations out there yeah. at the moment and some little flowers. So you're going to bring bring some of the outside in. That'd be kind of nice. Now, the, what, what is it? Last thing? Last, the thing, last for... thing is John's new project. Right, John's new project. Now, hang on. I've just got to check the name. I want to get it properly. And I, I know the project is Bob, but I think the terminology on uh, Instagram, the title is a bit different. So give me two secs. So... Firstly, I'd like to apologise. He's not just a project. No, he's a no. bear. He is, he is a star. He is a star. He is an artist. He is a social media guru. Phenom phenomena. Phenomenon is the word, yeah. yeah. Um, he plays golf. He, he plays lots of things. He plays golf. I've got a painting created by him. Um, it's just a bit random. He's a he's his manager. She's lovely. Yeah. Um, she looks after all the kind of creative process that Bob gets up to. And Bob and his friends... Yeah. And they run a little Instagram account, and it's a lot of fun. I'm just going to turn this around slightly. There we go. 
it's a lot of fun. And I've been saying for ages, being an artist, it'd be quite fun to get involved in this little project. They've got friends that are German as well. They've got another one. Lots Kilden. of different. Yeah, lots of different ones. Yeah. So look look at the details. But um, I've now got to create my own little little bear type thing. So remember sock monkeys? Look, we found sock sloth. There was a sock giraffe, but I didn't know I were going to get little clothes and stuff no. on them. I know, we are random. So, so this says, um, this is everything you need to sew your own sloth using... Sorry, right, you're in the way now, look, I'm blowing off. Uh, everything you need to um, create your own sloth using the socks provided. Um, socks, polyester, stuffing, needle thread, buttons, felt, instructions, template, and all you need is a pair of scissors. Yeah, little scissors. Yeah. Um, it also says age eight plus. There's maybe a slick, slight little glimmer of hope. <laughs> Might be. So um, my next next weekend will be spent creating a sock sloth. Yeah. And then we're going to build our own little um, Instagram account just for fun. So we'll tell you more about that later. But hopefully, I think provisioning the name at the moment is... Sydney. Sydney. Sid, Sid the sloth. Sydney. K-N-E-E. -E. It's a sock. Come on. It's a long sock. Sydney the sock. Yeah, Sydney the sock, sloth. Soft sock, that one. Um, so look out for the Instagram account because it's a bit wacky and it's going to be a bit interesting and we'll just create lots of wonderful things. It is in Sid's adventures. Right. And the very last thing we got, which was in the bookshop, is only a Waterstones thing, but back to our sort of foodie thing. Foodie thing. Yeah. Was John's been telling me ages about um, oh, you have Nigel to read Slater's it. biography, Toast. Yeah, autobiography. You, look, if you've not ever read Nigel Slater's autobiography, or if you've not seen the drama that was done a few years ago, you oh. can see it on Amazon. I think I'll pay a couple of quid for it now. I've, no, I've not seen uh, it. Which you've not seen, um, which has got, I think, Ken Stott in it as his dad. Right. And um, there was a tiny little cameo of Notice Later in it as well. Brilliant, brilliant. I mean, it's funny, it's sad, it's just heartwarming. It really is. And I've been telling you to read it for ages. You need a new book. I like a read. So it won't take you long. It's not a very big book. But um, once you've read it, I'll, get the, I'll show you the drama on the telly as well. Yeah. Well, well worth watching if you've not seen it. Well worth reading. Love Nigel Slater's books. The cookery books are literally stories of his yeah. life. So, well worth reading. That and, and that it. is it. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it's not quite the video we we're expecting, but that's just the way it goes. We put the wrong day. We put the day before the major event in Cornwall. Absolutely. So, but we didn't really, no. we didn't realise it. It was a it, random so. day. We thought we'd just pop down as we were getting some other stuff into it. And we needed good. to go and swap some stuff over that we bought a while back. So, that needs in to be In a high done. class shop. Primar, Primarly. Again, you get an awful, <laughs> don't, don't, awful sort of Ke Kelly can't go back to Primarney anymore. No, no, she had a bit of a row with someone in the queue. Mm, I'm not even going to get involved, but Kelly's a bit like a terrier. All right. Um, yeah. She picked on the wrong person. Yeah. Mm, not good. I don't think we'll be allowed back in again, but that's fine. We'll just find more expensive shops than well, Primarney. We usually do. I don't <laughs> ever usually go in the place, and now I know why. Now you know why, because you've probably been banned. Well. Right, on that note, we're going. Um, hope you've had a really good couple of days. The weather's beautiful. Enjoy it. Get out, make a barbecue. We've got some lovely recipes coming soon. Um, hopefully, you've already now seen a beautiful strawberry... Daiquiri tart. Daiquiri tart that we created. It was brilliant. I mean, it took a bit of work. Um, it was well worth watching. And we've got some great other strawberry ideas coming. We have. Okay, so... Good strawberry season. That's strawberry season. Yeah, except there was none insane for today. Not one strawberry. Amazing. But, oh, before we go, before we go, one last thing. I forgot the one last thing. One the miserable kit. Apart oh, from the one God. in Primark, apart from the ones in Primark, um, there was another store that was selling, well, plants and stuff plants and bits and, and pieces and, and eggs, right? Bits and pieces. So I took a photograph because, well. I saw. You saw first and you asked me what it was and I had to explain it's a flightless bird. It's not an ostrich, it's a rhea. A rear egg. And I said to the man, can I take a photograph? Mm. I took a photograph anyway of the egg. And uh, I said, how would you cook one of these? No idea. Right? And I'm thinking, well, I ain't going to pay that kind of money for a giant egg, even though you're going to now see it on a picture and go, go this on, Augie, you, you yeah. need to cook a rear egg. Uh, I'll go and find one from somewhere else. But I had no idea how to cook it. Well, and it only I took, uh, he probably did, you just but he just didn't want to, want to talk to you. You didn't want to speak do you know what I mean? So why do you want to buy an egg that much and not know what to do with it? And plus the fact, I mean, you know, my thought was it's a rear egg. 
there was one. Yeah. How long has it been hanging around? Yeah, but it's because, in the hot weather, I'm yeah, going to say that. You don't know. I mean, it's a random thing. And it was six just, quid. It's just one of these things, you know. You could buy a rotten six pound egg. Could, well, it could have been very interesting for a video if we cracked it open, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but if we do find ourselves uh, with the opportunity to get another rear egg, we will see about how to cook one. We need a blooming big egg cup, cup to stick it in. Um, if anyone's ever cooked an ostrich or a rear egg, let us know. I think it's about 12 to 15 minutes, but we'll see. Bye, everybody. We're going. See you soon. See you soon. See you in a couple of weeks on another little adventure. Okay.